Good morning students continuing our series on literary movement we have reached another important literary movement in history of british literature and that is oden group the poets associated with this group oden group uh, was also known as oxford poets because more or less they were graduated or did their education from oxford university or cambridge university and then above all they are also known as second generation modernist poet just like we have uh, two generations in romantic age and the first generation romantic poets were william wordsworth and st coleridge and then came the another second generation romantic age uh, that is the john gates pb shelley or you can say lord byron the same way we have two generations in modernism the first generation modern generation poets were uh, ezra pound t s eliot and then the second generation modernist poets were the poets associated with this particular group oden group and the poets included in this group were w h oden Louis MacNeese, Cecil Day Lewis, Stephen Spender and Christopher Isherwood. All right, so in this video we are going to talk about everything about Oden Group and we are also going to look at the points that are important from UGC net perspective. But before being this video if you are one of those friends who are preparing for gate examination or UGC net examination in English literature then you can simply check out our study material from our official website limitlessliterature.com. You can check the link in the description below to know more about our study material. Now without any further delay let's continue our discussion on Oden poets. So I just mentioned that the wasteland is the epitome of modernism the way T S Eliot wrote this poem wasteland he used a lot of symbols he tried to put the broken world into one poem that is wasteland yes because the world of 1920s were much, were much more broken after the world war 1 people were so much confused they thought that there is so much cruelty there is so much poverty in the world the world is broken into pieces and all these poets and artists were trying to Uh, put all these broken pieces uh, as a whole unit this is what modernism all about in modernism we have broken pieces fragmented pieces of the world and all the poets and artists trying to put all these fragmented pieces sort of puzzle into uh, one single unit in post modernism uh, that the poets that the writer say that we don't give a damn about these broken pieces let these world let the world uh, stay broken this is the all the absurdity of the life so post modern writers did not try to uh, put all these broken pieces together but in modernism we saw that all the writers all the poets were trying to put uh, these broken pieces these fragmented pieces of the world in one single unit so the same was followed by the second generation poets modernist poets like w h oden isherwood stephen spender etc the world of 1930s was as much as confusing the world of 1920s we see in 1920s there is a lot of poverty the spanish civil war the great depression people were dying and above all we had hitler who was started gaining the power in 1930s so w h oden used the symbols in his poems for instance he used the symbols a lot of symbols to uh, reprimand hitler in his poem september 1 1939 it is the same day when hitler invaded poland that is september 1 1939 and w h oden went on to write a poem where he writes of a low dishonest decade waves of anger and fear circulate over the bright and darkened lands of the earth obsessing our private lives the unmentionable order of death offends the september night heavily influenced by karl marx sigmund freud he used a lot of symbols in his poems he was reprimanding the poverty he was reprimanding uh, the insecurities the confusion the animal of the people that is coming out they are the killings in the war so he was sort of political and social uh, poet you can say he used to write on social and political lives in the same way the other poets of this oden group uh, were writing on the same themes another characteristic or uh, you can say another thing they shared uh, was that all of them were homosexual especially w h oden isherwood and stephen spender even the autobiographies of isherwood and uh, stephen spender claims that they used to live together in germany in a room and they have spent a good time together in the in each other's company in having that exotic that erotic 
lives but again these poets are not grouped under one category just because they were homosexual uh, but because they used to uh, use different types of technical writing and uh, they were inventors of poems all right so they invented a lot of techniques in poems what i meant to say and commonly they used to write on social and political issues all right so you don't have to go through all the poems they have written down simply just remember a few poems and go through some uh, few poems text because these poems are not that much big it will hardly take five to ten minutes to go through each one of the poems written by these poets especially the poems like wh odin's september 1 1939 lullaby top all the clocks above all remember that he has written also a poem based on wb yeats titled in memory of wb yeats another poems you can read that is stephen splendor's the pylons and i think continually simply go through these poems you don't have to go through all the poems written by all these writers you don't have to go through the works of isherwood mcneese uh, c day lewis so on and so forth all right so moving forward another important thing to remember here is that and uh, they were nicknamed as max ponde yes the nickname was given to them by another writer named roy campbell who has coined the nickname max ponde and this term is uh, mainly made up of four writers for instance mac came from louis mcneese Spurk came from Stephen Spender, On came from W. H. Auden, and Day came from Cecil Day Lewis. All right, so this is what all I have to share in this video. Try to remember each of the points that I have mentioned in this video. And if you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section below. I hope you found the video worth your time. If you are new to this channel, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on English literature. That's it for this video. Thank you.